arrived here in the land of Thebes. I, Dionysus, daughter of Zeus, born to him from Semele through Zeus's fiery lightning flash. I've changed my form from god to human, appearing here at these streams of Dersi, the waters of Ismarus. I've left the fabulously wealthy east, lands of Lydians and Phrygians, Persia's sun-drenched plains, walled towns in Bactria. I've moved across the bleak lands of the Medes, through rich Arabia, all Asian lands, along the salt sea coast, through those towns with their beautifully constructed towers full of Greeks and barbarians all intermingled. Now I've come to Thebes, city of Greeks, only after I've set those eastern lands dancing in my mysteries, making known to men my own divinity. <sighs> my mother was killed by Zeus in these very walls, scorded by his lightning due to Hera's trickery. <sighs> now I stand here with my ivy thyrsus in my hand because, well, my mother's sisters have acted badly. Something they, of all people, should know to avoid. They boasted aloud that I, Dionysus, was no child of Zeus, claiming Semele, once pregnant by some mortal man, attributed her bad luck in bed to Zeus. <sighs> A story made up, they said, to trick Cadmus. Those sisters state that is why Zeus killed her, because she lied about the man she'd slept with. <sighs> So I've driven those women in a frenzy from their homes. They now live out in the mountains. <laughs> all Theban offspring, or at least all women, now sit among the rocks, underneath green pines, no roof overhead, Cadmus' daughters in their company as well. For this city has to learn, though against its will, it has yet to be initiated into my Dionysian rites. Here I plead the cause of my own mother, Semele, appearing as a god to mortal men, the one she bore to Zeus. Now, Cadmus, the old king, has just transferred his power, his royal authority, onto Pentheus, his daughter's son, who, in my case at least, fights against the gods, prohibiting me all sacrificial offerings. When he prays, he chooses to ignore me. For this neglect, I'll prove to him, to all in Thebes, that I was born a god. <laughs> Once these things have been made right, I'll move on to some other land, revealing who I am. But if Thebans in this city try to make those Bacchic women leave, drive them forcibly from the mountains, then I, commander of these Maenads, will fight them. <sighs> That's why I've transformed myself, assumed a mortal shape, altered my look so I resemble any notably above average human being. Ah! Oh! But you there, my band of worshippers, my comrades on the road, and when we rest, take up your drums. Move around Pentheus's palace, let Cadmus's city see you, while I go in person to the clefts of Mount Cthyron to join my back eye in their dancing. To move swiftly for Dionysus, a sweet and easy task. Hailing great God Bacchus, let every mouth be pure. Speak no profanities, let him open up the door.
Where's my servant at the door? You, in there. Tell Cadmus to get himself out of the house. Go tell him Tiresias is waiting for him. He knows well enough why I've come for him. I'm an old man, and he's even older. But we've agreed to make ourselves a thyrsus, and to put crowns upon our heads with garlands of his ivy branches. My dearest friend! I was inside the house, and I heard your voice. I recognized it, the voice of a man truly <laughs> wise. So I've come equipped in all of this good stuff. We must praise him as best we can for this. Dionysus is my daughter's child, now that he's revealed himself a god to men. Or must I go and dance? Or must I move my feet and shake my old gray hair? You must guide me, Tiresias, one old man leading another, for you're the experts here. Oh, I never tire of waving the thyrsus day and night Striking the earth, oh, what a rapture. <laughs> now we can forget that we're old men. <laughs> you feel the same way I do then, for I feel young and want to try the dancing. Shall we go up the mountain in a chariot? The god would not then get complete respect. So, I'll be your nursemaid. One old man will take charge <laughs> of another one. The god himself will get us to the place without our efforts. Of all the city, are we the only ones who dance in honour of Bacchus? Yes, indeed. But we're the only ones whose minds are clear. As for the others, well, their thinking's wrong. There'll be a lengthy wait. Take my hand. Yeah, take it. Make a pair of it and yours. I'm immortal, so I don't mock the gods. To the gods, we mortals are all ignorant. There's old traditions from our ancestors. The ones as old as time itself, no argument will ever overthrow, in spite of subtleties sharp minds invent. Will someone say that I disrespect old age if I intend to dance with ivy on my head? Not so, for the god makes no distinctions whether dancing is for young or old. He wishes to gather honours from us all, to be praised communally without division. Since you're Blind to daylight, I'll be your seer, tell you what's going on. Yeah. Pentheus, that child of Echion, the one to whom I handed over power in this land, he's coming here, to this house. He's in a rush, he looks flustered. What news will he bring? The 
It so happens I've been away from Thebes. But I hear about disgusting things going on here in the city. Women. <laughs> leaving home. <laughs> to go to silly Bacchic rituals, cavorting there in mountain shadow, with dances honouring some upstart god, this Dionysus. Whoever he may be. Mixing bowls filled with wine, in the middle of their meetings they creep off one by one to lonely spots to have sex with men and women, claiming their mayonnaise busy worshipping, but they rank Aphrodite, goddess of sexual desire, ahead of Bacchus. All well, the ones I've caught, my servants guard in our public prison, their hands chained up. All well, those not in the city, I'll hunt down. Chase them from the mountain. That includes Agarwe, who bore me to Ekian. I know, Otonoe, Actian's mother, all of them. Once I've clamped them all in iron fetters, I'll quickly end this perverse nastiness, this Bacchic celebration. People say some stranger has arrived, some Wizard, <laughs> a conjurer from the land of Lydia, with sweet-smelling hair and golden ringlets, and Aphrodite's charm in wine-dark eyes. She hangs around the young girls both day and night, dangling in front of them her <laughs> joyful mysteries. <laughs> if I catch her in this city, I'll stop her. She'll make no more clattering with her thirsts. I'll cut her head off. I'll cut it right from her body. This woman claims that Dionysus is a god, alleging that once upon a time he was stitched up, sewn inside Zeus's thigh. But Dionysus burned to death along with Selmy in that lightning strike because she'd lied. She maintained that she'd had sex with Zeus. All this surely merits harsh punishment. Death by hanging? Whoever this stranger is, her insolence is an insult to me. Lord Pentheus, over there. <sighs> well, here's something astounding. I see Tiresias, our soothsayer, all dressed up in hideous fur coats. My, <laughs> My mother's father, too. This is ridiculous, to take a thyrsus and dance around like this gold. I don't like to see such arrant foolishness from your old age. Look, Grandfather, why not throw that ivy out? And why not let this thyrsus go? Tiresias, you're the one who's put him up to this. You want to bring in some new god for men so you can inspect more birds and from his sacrifice make more money. If your grey old age did not, you'd sit in chains among the Bacchae. Whenever women start to take pleasure in gleaming wine, I say there is nothing healthy in their worshipping. That is impiety. Oh, stranger, have you no reference for the gods, for Cadmus, who planted that crop of men into the earth? You are a child of Echion. Do you wish to bring your family into disrepute? When a man of wisdom has good occasion to speak out and takes the opportunity, it's not that hard to give an excellent speech. You've got a quick tongue and... Seem intelligent, but your words don't make any sense at all. A fluent orator, whose power comes from self-assurance and nothing else, makes a bad citizen, for he lacks uh, sense. This man, this new god, whom you ridicule, it's impossible for me to tell you just how great he'll be in all of Greece. Young man. Among human beings, two things stand out preeminent of highest rank. Goddess Demeter is one. She is the earth, and she feeds mortal people cereal grains. The other one came later. Born of Semele, he brought with him liquor from the grape, something to match the bread of Demeter. He introduced it among mortal men. When they drink what streams off the vine, unhappy mortals are released from pain. It grants them sleep allows them to forget their daily troubles. Except for wine, there's no cure for human hardship. And yet you mock him 
Why? Because he was sewn into Zeus's thigh. Well, let me show you how this all makes sense. When Zeus grabbed him for the lightning flame, he brought him to Olympus as a god. But Hera wished to throw him out of heaven. So Zeus, in the manner worthy of a god, came up with a devious counter plan. From the sky, which flows around the earth, Zeus broke off a piece, shaped it like Dionysus, and gave that to Hera as a hostage. The real child he sent to the nymphs to raise, thus saving him from Hera's jealousy. Over time, people mixed up the words sky and thigh, claiming he'd come from Zeus's thigh, changing words because he, a god, had once been hostage to goddess Hera. So they made up the tale. The gods are prophet too, for in his rites, the Bacchic celebrations of the madness, a huge prophetic power is unleashed. When the gods fully enters human bodies. He makes those possessed by a frenzy prophets. They speak of what will come in future days. He also shares the work of war god Ares, for there are times, an army all drawn up, weapons ready will shake with terror before any man has set hand to his spear. Such madness comes from Dionysus. Trust me, Pentheus, don't be too confident a sovereign's force controls men. If something seems right to you, don't think that's wisdom. So welcome this god into your country. Pour libations to him and celebrate these Bacchic rites with garlands on your head. On women, where Aphrodite is concerned, Dionysus will not enforce restraint. Such modesty you must seek in nature where it already dwells. For any woman whose character is chaste won't be defiled by Bacchic revelry, don't you see that? When there are many people at your gates, you're happy. The city shouts your praise. It celebrates the name of Pentheus. The god too, I think, derives great pleasure from being honored. And so Cadmus, and you mock, and I, will crown our heads with ivy, and we'll join the ritual. An old, gray team, but we still have to dance. Your words will not turn me against the god. Well, you are mad. Under a cruel delusion, no drug can heal that ailment, no. In fact, some drug has caused it. Old man, you've not disgraced Apollo with your words. And by honoring this Dionysus, you've shown your motivation. My child, Tiresias has given you some good advice. You should live among us, not outside tradition. Right now, you're flying around thinking, but not clearly. For if, as you claim, this man is not a god, why not pretend he is one? Why not tell a lie, a really good one? Then it will seem that some god has been born assembly. We and all our family will win honor. Remember the dismal fate of Actaeon, torn apart in some mountain forest by bloodthirsty dogs he'd raised himself. He'd boasted he was better in the hunt than Artemis. Don't suffer the same fate. Come, let me crown your head with ivy. Join us in giving honour to this Keep god. Keep your hands off me. Be off with you. Go to these back which was yours, but don't infect me with your madness. As for the one who's been your teacher in all this ridiculousness, I'll bring her to justice. You two, go to where this man, Tiresias, has that seat of his, where he inspects his birds. Take some levers. Knock it down, demolish it completely, turn the whole place upside down, then I'll really do him damage. You others, go to the city, scour it for this effeminate stranger who corrupts our women with new disease and thus infects our beds. If you find her, bring her here for judgment. A death by stoning. That way Ashley writes and Phoebes come to a bitter end. You're unhappy man. You've no idea what it is you're saying. You've gone mad. <sighs> Even before now, you weren't in your right mind. <sighs> Let's be off, Cadmus. We'll pray to the god on Pentheus's behalf, though he is a savage. And for the city too, so he won't harm it. Come, bring the uh, ivy-covered staff. See if you can help support my body. I'll do the same for you. It would be shameful if two old men collapsed. But no matter, 
For he must serve Bacchus, son of Zeus. But you, Cadmus, you should be more careful, or Pentheus will bring trouble to your home. I'm not saying this as a prophecy, but on the basis of what's going on, a man who's mad tends to utter madness. Vanities he utters in the worst kind of way. The insults in his eye nicest. Child of some Nelly, oh chief goddess. Because that's what mad men do. Yeah, that's what mad men do. because we've caught the prey you sent us out to catch. Yes, uh, attempts have proved successful. The beast you see here was tame with us. She didn't try to run. No, she surrendered willingly enough without turning pale or changing color on those wine dark cheeks. She even laughed at us, inviting us to tie her up and lead her in. She stood still, making it easier for me to take her in. It was awkward, so I said, <laughs> Stranger, I don't want to lead you off, but I'm under orders here from Pentheus, who sent me. 
And um, <clears throat> there's something else. Um, those other Bacchic women you locked up, the ones you took in chains into the public prison, they've all escaped, they're gone. <clears throat> Playing around in some meadow, calling out to Dionysus, <laughs> summoning their god. <laughs> chains fell off their feet, just dropping on their own. Keys opened doors, not turned by human hands. It, this woman here has come to Thebes full of yeah, amazing tricks, but you know. The rest of this affair is up to you. Unchain her. I've got her in my net. She's not fast enough to get away from me. <laughs> oh, stranger. I see this body of yours is not unsuitable for men's pleasure. That's why you've come to Thebes. As for your hair, it's long, which suggests you're no wrestler flows across your cheeks, it's most seductive. You've smooth skin too, you've looked after it, avoiding the sun's rays by staying in the shade. With your beauty you chase Aphrodite. <laughs> but first, tell me something of your family. Well, that's easy enough though. I'm not boasting. You've heard of Timolus, where the flowers grow. I know it. It's around the town of Sardis. I'm from there. My hometown is Lydia. Then why do you bring these rituals to Greece? Dionysus sent me. Son of Zeus. <laughs> well, is it some Zeus who creates new gods? No. It's the same Zeus who wed Semele right here. Oh, and did this Zeus overpower you at night <sighs> in your dreams, or were your eyes wide I open? I saw him. He saw me. He gave me the sacred rituals. Tell me what they're like. These rituals of yours? That information cannot be passed on to men like you, those uninitiated in the rites of Bacchus. Do they benefit those who sacrifice? They're worth knowing, but <laughs> you're not allowed to hear. You've avoided that question skillfully, making me want to hear an answer. The rituals are no friend of any man who's hostile to the gods. This god of yours, since you've seen him clearly, what's he like? He was what he wished to be. Not made to order. Mm, again, you fluently evade my question, answering nothing whatsoever. <laughs> yes. But then a man can seem totally ignorant when speaking to a fool. It seems the first place you've come to with your god. All the barbarians are dancing in these rites. <laughs> I'm not surprised. They're dimmer than Greeks. <laughs> in this, they are much wiser. But their laws are very different too. When you dance these rites, is it at night or, or during daylight? Mm, mainly at night. Shadows guarantee discretion. And deceive the women. It's all corrupt. One can do shameful things in the daylight too. <laughs> you must be punished for these evil games. You too, for foolishness and impiety to the gods. <laughs> How brash this back end is. How well prepared <laughs> in using language. What punishment am I to suffer? What harsh penalties will you inflict? First, I'll cut off this delicate hand. My hands. hair is sacred. I grow it for the gods. Give me that thyrsus in your hand. This wand I carry is the gods, not mine. You'll have to seize it from me for yourself. I will lock your body up inside in prison. My god will personally set me free whenever I so choose. That only works if you call him while among the back eyes. He sees my suffering now. Where is he then? From... My eyes do not see him. He's where I am. You don't see him because you don't believe. Seize her. She's insulting Thebes and me. I warn you, you shouldn't tie me up. <laughs> I've got my wits about me. You've lost yours. But I am more powerful than you, so I will have you put in chains. <sighs> You're quite ignorant of who you are, what you do and why you live. I? and Pentheus, son of Agarwe and Echion. <laughs> a suitable name. It suggests misfortune. Go, now, lock her up in the stables. That way, you'll see nothing but darkness. There, you can dance. Oh, and as for those women, those partners in crime you brought here with you, we'll sell them off, or, or we'll keep them here as slaves, working our looms. Once we stop their hands beating those drumskins, <laughs> making all that, that noise. <sighs> I'll go then. For I won't have to suffer what won't occur. But you can be sure of this. 
Dionysus, whom you claim does not exist, will come after you for retribution after all your insolence. He's the one you put in chains when you treat me unjustly!
Dionysus. Dionysus. Oh, Dionysus. 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 Join our company. Dionysus. 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 Sacred Lord of Earthquakes, shake this ground. Strike right now! Burn Pentheus's palace! Consume it all! Look! By the tomb of Semele, a fire left by the thunderbolt sent from Zeus long ago. Throw your bodies down to the ground, made us down! For our master, son of Zeus, come to this palace now to destroy it. Ah, my barbarian women! Do you lie there on the ground, prostrate with fear? <laughs> It seems to me you felt Dionysus' power as he rattles Pentheus' palace. Get up now. Be brave and stop your trembling. Oh, how happy I am to see you once more. <laughs> Our greatest light in all the joyful dancing. We felt alone and totally abandoned. Did you feel despair when I was cast away in Pentheus' gloomy dungeon? <laughs> how could I not? You could protect me if you ain't run into danger. But tell me, how did you escape, an ungodly man? <laughs> no trouble. I saved myself with ease. But didn't he bind up your hands? Up in chains? <laughs> I was playing with him, of course. <laughs> the idiot thought he was tying me up. He didn't even touch or handle me. He was too busy feeding his desires. In that stable where he went to tie me up, he found a bull. He threw the iron cuffs around its hooves. As he did so, he had this, this rage. He kept panting and his body was dripping in sweat. His teeth were biting his lip. I sat quietly watching from nearby. After that, Bacchus came and shook the place, setting his mother Semele's tomb on fire. Oh, seeing that, Pentheus thought his palace was burning down. He ran round here and there, screaming to his servants to bring more water! <laughs> and all for nothing. Anyway, once I'd escaped, he seized a dark sword and rushed inside the house. Now, it seems to me, but I'm assuming here, that Dionysus set up some phantom image in the courtyard out there. Pentheus charged at it, slashing away at nothing but bright air, thinking he was butchering me. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <gasps> Bacchus kept hurting him in more ways. See, he's knocked his palace down, level with the ground, <laughs> all shattered. So Pentheus has witnessed a bitter end to my imprisonment. He's worn out, he's dropped his sword, exhausted, a mere mortal daring to fight a god. So. I've shouted out here calmly to you, leaving the house, ignoring Pentheus. <laughs> anyway, uh, it seems to me I hear marching feet. No doubt he'll storm out front here soon enough. I wonder what he'll say after all this. Well, if he comes out raging, I'll deal with him quite gently. After all, a wise man ought to keep his temper. <sighs> what is happening to me? Ugh. I'm losing my touch. The strangers just escaped and we'd only just chained her up. Here. Here's the girl. How? How are you here? How did you get here outside my palace? Hold on. <clears throat> Calm down, don't be so angry. How did you get here and escape your chains? Did I not say someone would release me? Or did you miss that part? Who was it? You're always explaining things in riddles. It was the one who enriches the clustering vine. This, this Dionysus, yes, your god. Your words are a lovely insult to him. He came to Thebes with nothing but good things. Seal off the towers. Seal off the towers, on my orders! All of them, seal them off around the city! <laughs> what for? Surely a god can make it over any wall. <laughs> oh, you're so wise, except in everything in which you should be wise. I was born wise, especially in matters where I need to be. Oh, but look here. This man has come to report to you from the mountains. Why don't you see what he has to say, yeah? Don't worry, I won't 
run off. Pentheus, ruler of this land of Thebes, we've just left Kithiron. What's this important news you come with? We saw those women in their Bacchic frenzy, those sacred screamers, all driven crazy, the ones who run barefoot from their homes. So we came, my lord, to tell you and the city the dreadful things they're doing. Their actions are beyond all wonder. But I wish to know if I should tell you these things or whether I should hold my tongue. Your mood changes so fast, I get afraid. Your sharp spirit, your all too royal temper. Look, speak on. Whatever you have to say, you'll get no judgment from me whatsoever. Look, it's not right for me to pass my anger onto you. The more terrible the things you tell me about these Bacchae, the worse I'll move against the one who's been their teacher in all their devious tricks. The grazing cattle had just moved into upland pastures. Right then, we saw them, three groups of dancing women. Autonoe led the first, your mother, Agawe, led the second, and Ino led the third. They were all asleep, bodies quite relaxed, some leaning back on leafy boughs of pine, others cradling their heads on oak leaf pillows resting on the floor. They weren't quite as you described either, all drunk on wine or on the music of the flutes or even hunting for Aphrodite in the woods alone. Once she heard the horned cattle lowing, your mother stood up amid those bacchae and called them to stir their limbs from sleep. They rubbed refreshing sleep from their eyes then stood up straight there. A marvelous sight to see such orderly arrangement Women, young and old, and still unmarried girls. First they let their hair loose down their shoulders, then around those skins they looped some snakes who licked the women's cheeks. And they draped themselves with garlands from oak trees and ivy. Then one of them, taking a thyrsus, struck a rock with it, and water gushed out fresh as dew. Another, taking her thyrsus, scraped the ground at once, Fountains of wine were sent up from the spot. All those who craved white milk to drink simply scratched the earth with their fingertips. It came out in streams. From their ivy wands, thick, sweet honey dripped. Oh, if you'd been there, if you'd seen this, you'd come with reverence to that God whom you criticize so much. So we set up to catch them, as you requested, planning an ambush, hiding in the bushes, lying down there. At the appointed time, the women started their Bacchic ritual, brandishing their thyrsus and calling out to that great god they cried to, Dionysus, Zeus's son. The entire mountain and its wild animals were, like them, in one Bacchic ecstasy. Agawe, by chance, was dancing close to me, so leaving the ambush where I'd been concealed, I leapt out, hoping to grab hold of her. But she cried out, Oh, my quick hounds, men are chasing us. Come on, follow me, armed with that thyrsus in your hand. And so we ran off and narrowly escaped being torn apart. But then those Bacchic women, all unarmed, went at the heifers browsing on the turf. You should have seen them, all unarmed, no weapons. They went at the cows, tearing them to pieces. There were ribs and cloven hooves tossed everywhere. Some dangled in branches, dripping in blood and gore. And the bulls, proud beasts till then, with angry horns, lay there on the ground, dragged down by the hands of a thousand angry girls. Then they went back to where they'd started from, those fountains which the god had made for them. They washed off the blood. Snakes licked their cheeks, cleansing their skin of every drop. My lord, you must welcome this god into our city, whoever he may be. He's a mighty god in many ways. The people say, so I've heard, that he gives to mortal human beings that vine which ends human grief. Without wine, there can be no Aphrodite or any other pleasure left for men. I'm afraid to talk freely before the king, but I'll speak. 
this Dionysus is not inferior to any god. This Dionysian arrogance, like fire, keeps flaring up close by, a great insult to all Greeks. We must not hesitate. Go to the electric gates, call out the troops, the heavy infantry and all fast cavalry. All the archers too. We'll march out against these back eyes. And this whole business will lose control. <laughs> Out of prison, enjoy that fact. Or should you serve some more time? The threads are turned into an offering mortal. Those back eye women, I'll slaughter them all. <laughs> How disgraced you'll be running from my women. What sort of lord is he? And he won't let you move his back eye from the mountains. It's useless trying to argue with this stranger. No matter what I say or do, she won't shut up. My lord, there's still a chance to end this calmly. By doing what? Become a slave to your woman army. I can bring you to them without use of weapons. I think this is a trick, not that I'll get a confession. There's no way I can move a back light from the mountains. What if I want to save you in my own way? You've made some backache traps so you can live out your days. Oh, yes, some arrangements may Bring me my weapons. But my lord, don't, don't you dare speak another word! My lord, how would you like to cast your gaze upon the women in the mountains as they pray? Like that a lot, for which I'd pay in gold. Why is that? What reason do you hold? Why do you so, I so long, long to see, see them, them in the mountains? mountains. Sorry to see the women drunk. Would that bring you pleasure seeing how far your city's sunk? Yes, it would. If I could watch from up a tree. You mean you plan to go there secretly? Why shouldn't from I? From there they'd find you easily. Right, sure, I'll go there openly. So prepared and you will follow me. Yes. Well, we must reclothe you. Can't I go in what I've come in? You must wear a dress when made of eastern linen. <sighs> Not to go there as a man. If you did, they'd kill you. This is the plan. To the end of truth, your voice still rings. Dionysus taught me all these things. Dress as a woman. I can't do that. I'd be ashamed to. You're still keen to see those maynards, aren't you? I've never dressed that way. I may need some help. I'll go inside the house. I will see those back high among them in the mountains. What sort of thing will you recommend? I'll fix up among hairpiece for your head. Is this enough? Would I be discreet? A dress that goes down to your feet. What else? What other things will you provide? A fur sister hold and a fawn skin hide. This band around your head and the look will never be exposed. Crazy, I'm head to toe. Really is the best method though. I can't go dressed in women's clothes. But you'll cause bloodshed fighting these back high. Yes, that's true. So first we must go up and spy. That sounds like a wise way to proceed. But how would I get out? Want the Thebans notice me? I'll take you by deserted streets. Well, anything's easier than being made a fool of by Bacchic women. Let's go in the house. I'll think about what's best. Whatever you say, I'll be ready. It's a choice of taking weapons or taking your advice. <laughs> My women! That man's entangled in our net. <laughs> He'd be so easy to get. Drive him insane from his own stress. 
Laughing through Thebes in a women's dress This man who made all of this mess He'll wear it down to Hades Once he's butchered by his own mother's hands He'll bow down to Dionysus Rightful ruler of this land Cause I won't let him Move my back high from the mountains No, I won't let him Move my back high from the mountains <laughs> When will oh. I be dancing? Oh. Leaping barefoot through the night, flinging my head back in <laughs> ecstasy in the clear, cold, dew-fresh air. Celebrating like a fawn, racing across the river bank, rejoicing in the meadows. In a place where no hunters <sighs> lurk. Oi! <laughs> in the green living world, in the shady foliage of the trees. What is wisdom? What is finer than the rights men get from gods to hold their powerful hands over the heads of their enemies? What's good is always loved. The power of the gods is difficult to stir, but it's a power we can count on. Mm. It punishes all mortal men who honour their own ruthless ways, who, in their fits of madness, fail to show <coughs> reverence to the gods. Gods track down every man who scorns their worship, using their cunning to conceal the enduring, steady pace of time. There is no righteousness in those who recognise or practise what's beyond our customary laws. It's a truth easy to acknowledge. Whatever is divine is mighty. Whatever is long established is an eternal natural truth. What is wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> what is finer than rights men get from gods to hold their powerful hands over the heads of their enemies? What's good is always loved. Mm. Whoever escapes a storm at sea is a happy man at harbour. Whoever overcomes great hardship is likewise another happy man. Various men outdo each other in wealth and power in all sorts of ways. The hopes of countless men are infinite in number. <laughs> some make men rich and some come to nothing. So I consider a man blessed who's lived a happy life, just existing day by day. <laughs> <sighs> you have so eager to see those things you should not, so keen to chase what you should not pursue. I mean, you, Pentheus, come out here now, out in front of the palace, dressed as a raving bacchant, or to spy upon your mother's company. Oh, Pentheus. <laughs> you look just like one of Cadmus's daughters. Fancy that. <laughs> I see two sons, two images of seven gated Thebes. And you look like a bull leading me out here, with those horns growing out of your head. Were you once upon a time a beast? It's certain now you've changed into a bull. The god walks with us. He's made a pact with us. Before he was not so kind, but now your mind's working in you as it should. How do I look? <laughs> do I look just like I know or my mother Agarwe? When I look at you, I think I see them. <laughs> but here, this strand of hair, it's out of place. It's not under the headband where I fixed it. I must have worked it loose inside the house, shaking my head left and right when I was practicing my dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it. It's only right that I should serve you. <laughs> Straighten up your head. All right, you can be my dresser now that I've transformed myself for you. <laughs> your top's loose. And the pleats of your skirt are crooked <laughs> down there. Oh, well, that seems to be suited for this right leg, but on this side, the dress hangs perfectly down the full length of my limb. Once you see those Bacchic women acting modestly, once you confront something you don't quite expect, <laughs> you'll consider me one of your dearest friends. This thyrsus. Should I hold it in my right hand or in my left? Which and is more suitable for Bacchic celebration? Yes, in your right, yes. Oh. And lift your right foot in time with it. <laughs> Your mind has changed. I applaud you for it. Will I be powerful enough to carry the forests of Cithiron on my shoulders along with all those Bacchic females? If you have desire, you'll have the power. Mm. Before your mind was not well adjusted, but <laughs> now it's working in you as it should. Should we take some levers with us, or should I rip up forest by hand, putting arm and shoulder under mountain peaks? As long as you don't completely destroy the places where the nymphs all congregate, where... Oh. Pan plays his music on his pipes. You make a good point. 
I use no force to get the better of these women. I'll conceal myself there in the pine trees. Uh, you'll find just the sort of hiding place a spy should want to find himself. Mm. See, so he can gaze upon the main axe. That's good. <laughs> I can see them in the woods now, going at it like rabbits, clutching each other as they make sweet love. Perhaps that's why you're going, as a guard, to stop all that. Maybe you'll capture one of them, <laughs> unless you're captured first. Oh, lead on! Through the centre of our land of Thebes, I'm the only man in the city who dares undertake this enterprise. You bear this city's burden, <laughs> so the tasks that are specially set out for you are waiting. <laughs> Follow me. I'm the one who'll take you there. When you return, someone else will bring you back. That will be my mother. You'll have become something to celebrate. That's why I'm going. You'll be carried back. You're pampering In me. your mother's arms. You've really made up your mind to spoil me. To spoil you? Oh, well, yes, in my own way. Then I'll be off. To get what I deserve. <laughs> you fearful, terrifying man. <laughs> On your way to horrific suffering. <laughs> well... You receive a towering fame as high as heavens. <sighs> Hold out your hand to him, Agarwe. You two, her sisters, Cadmus' daughters. I'm leading this man in your direction for the great confrontation where I will triumph. I and Dionysus. <laughs> what else will happen? Things will show as they occur. <laughs> Now you house of madness, up now into the mountains. Go where the daughters of Cadmus keep their worshippers in their surroundings. Go then into a furious revenge, those raving spies, all of those men. A man in particular here is woe, who's all dressed up in women's clothes.
how I grieve for this house. So happy throughout Greece in earlier days, home to that old man, Cadmus from Sidon. How I now lament. I know I'm just a slave, but nonetheless. Do you bring us news? Has something happened, something about Bacchae? Pentheus, child of Echion, is dead. <laughs> What are you saying? How can you now rejoice like this? The death of one who was my master. We're strangers here in Thebes, so we sing out our joy in foreign chants. No long need we cower here in fear of prisoners' chains. <laughs> Do you think thieves lack sufficient men to take care of your punishment? <laughs> Dionysus, oh Dionysus, he is the one with power over me, not thieves. <laughs> that you may be forgiven, but to cry aloud with joy when such disasters come, that, women, is not something you should do. Tell all, how did death strike him down? That unrighteous man who acted so unjustly. grassy meadow, keeping our feet and tongues quite silent so we could listen without being noticed. There was a valley there shut in by cliffs. Through it, refreshing waters flowed and there were pines there for shade. The maenads sat there, their hands all busy with delightful work. Some with ivy strands repairing damaged thirsoy, while others sang, chanting Bacchic songs to one another, carefree as fillies free from harnesses. Pentheus, that unhappy man, not seeing the crowd of women, spoke up. Stranger, I can't see those backends. My eyes can't glimpse those crafty maynads. But up there, on that hill, a pine tree stands. If I climb that, I might see those women and witness the disgraceful things they do. Then we saw that stranger work a marvel. She seized the pine tree's topmost branch. It stretched up to heaven and brought it down to the earth, pulling it as if it were a curved bow or some wheel forced into a circle and staked out with pegs. That's how the stranger brought that pine tree to earth, by hand, something which no mortal man could ever do. And she proceeded to set Pentheus in that pine tree's branches. Maynads could spy him up there far more easily than he could spy them. As he released the pine tree, she, with her hands like no mortal man could ever do, she, she, she released it and it towered up to heaven there. And just, just as it was coming into view, the stranger had completely disappeared by this point. Some voice, I guess it was Dionysus, cried out, Young woman, I have brought you the man who laughed at you, who ridiculed my rights. Now punish him. As it spoke, a dreadful fire arose between the earth and heaven. The air was still. In the wooded valley, no sound came from the leaves, and all the beasts were silent. The women stood up at once. They'd heard the voice, but not distinctly. They gazed around them. Then again, the voice shouted its commands. When Cadmus's daughters clearly understood what Dionysus ordered, they rushed out, running fast as doves, their feet moving at an alarming speed. His mother, Agarwe, with both her sisters and all the Bacchae, charged straight through the valley, the torrents, the mountain cliffs, pushed to a god-inspired frenzy. They saw the king there sitting 
in that time. Then they scaled the cliff face looming up opposite and started throwing rocks at him, trying to hurt him. Some threw branches or hurled their thirsoy through the air, sad, miserable Pentheus, their target. But they didn't hit him. He sat high up there, beyond their bacchic cruelty. No way down, no way to save his own skin. Then, like lightning, they struck up oak branches, trying them as levers to uproot the tree. When all these attempts had failed, Agarway said, come now, Maynads, make a circle round the tree. Then each of you seize a branch so we can catch this climbing beast, so we can stop him from making our God's secret dances known. Thousands of hands grabbed the tree and pulled. They yanked it from the ground. Pentheus fell, crashing down to earth, screaming in distress. He knew well enough something terrible was about to happen. His own priestess mother first began the slaughter. She hurled herself at him. He untied his headband so she would recognize his face, so she wouldn't kill him. Touching his cheek, he cried out, It's me, mother, your child, Pentheus. You gave birth to me at home in Echion's house. Take pity on me, mother. Don't kill me because I've made a mistake. But Agarwe was foaming at the mouth, eyes rolling in their sockets. She didn't listen. She was possessed in a bucket frenzy. She seized the poor man's arm beneath the elbow, pushed her foot against his ribs, then tore his shoulder out. The strength she had, it was not her own. The god put power into those hands of hers. Meanwhile, I know her sister went to the other side, ripping out chunks of Pentheus's flesh, while Otone and all the back, the whole lot of them, all attacked as well, the woman howling out together. As long as Pentheus was still alive, he kept on screaming. The woman cried in triumph, one brandished an arm, the other had a foot, complete with hunting boot. The woman's nails tore his ribs apart. Their hands grew bloody, tossing bits of flesh back and forth for fun. His body parts lie scattered everywhere. Some under rough rocks, some deep in the trees. They're, they're difficult to find. As for the poor victim's head, his mother, Agawe, stumbled upon it picked it up, then stuck it on a thyrsus at the tip. Now, she carries it around Cithiron, as though it were some wild lion's head. But she's left her sisters dancing with the maenads now. She's coming inside these very walls, showing off with pride her ill-fated prey, calling out to Bacchus, her fellow hunter, her companion on the chase, the glorious winner, the victor. But by serving him in her great triumph, she wins only tears. The best thing to do is to keep one's mind controlled and worship all that comes down from the gods. That, in my view, is the wisest custom for those who can lead their lives that way. <laughs> Let's dance on a Bacchus. Let's shout beside what's happened here. Happened to Pentheus, child of a serpent, who put on women's clothes, who took up the beautiful and blessed Thyrsus, his certain death disaster brandished by the bowl. <laughs> What noble undertaking is this to dredge one's hands in blood, lifeblood from one's only son? <laughs> Wait! I see a Garway! Pentheus's mother on her way home! Uh, her eyes transfixed! Let's now welcome her, the happy revels of our god of joy! <laughs> Baron Bacon. <laughs> 
from the mountains I've brought home this ivy tendril, freshly cut. We've had a good hunt. We all see it, as your fellow dancers w will accept it. I caught this young lion without a trap, as you can see. What desert was he in? Kithiron. On Kithiron? Kithiron killed him. Who struck him down? The honour of the first blow goes to me. <laughs> in the dancing I'm called Blessed Agawe. Who else? Well, from Cadmus. <laughs> <laughs> from Cadmus what? His other children laid hands on the beast. But only after me, only after I did first. We've had a blessed hunt. So come, share our feast. You want me to eat that with you? Oh, most unfortunate woman. <laughs> this is a young bull. Look at this cheek. It's just growing down near to the crop of his soft hair. Yes, his hair makes him resemble some wild beast. <laughs> Bacchus is a clever huntswoman. She wisely sets her maynards on this beast. <laughs> yes, our mistress is indeed a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Have you any praise for me? Uh, I, I praise, praise you. you. And soon all Cadmus's people. Uh, and Pentheus. Your son. We'll celebrate his mother, who caught the beast just like a lion. It's a strange trophy. And strangely captured, too. You're proud of what you've done? Yes. I'm delighted. Great things I've done. Great things on this hunt. Clear for all to see. Well then, most unhappy woman, <laughs> show off your hunting prize to all the citizens. All of you here, all of you living in the land of Thebes in the city with its splendid walls, come see the wild beast we hunted down. Daughters of Cadmus, not with thronged spears, Thessalian javelins, or by using nets but with our own white hands, our own fingertips. After this, why should huntsmen boast aloud when no one needs the implements they use? We caught this beast by hand, tore it apart with our own hands. But where's my father? He should come here. And where is Pentheus? Where is my son? He should take a ladder, set it against the house, and fix this lion's head way up there, high on the palace front. I have captured it and brought it home with me. Follow me, all those of you who carry some part of wretched Pentheus. You, servant, come here to the house. I'm worn out. So many searchers. When I picked up the body, I found it, scattered upon the rocky class of Mount Cathiron, ripped to pieces. No part left together in one place. It was in the woods, so <laughs> difficult to search for. Someone told me what my daughter's done, those horrible acts. The only ones had come back here, here with old Tiresias inside the city walls, back from the back eye. So, 
I climbed the mountain once again to bring home the child the mine had killed. I saw a ton away who brought Actian to Aristius. And I know she was there with her. Both still possessed. Quite mad. Poor creatures. Someone told me my daughter's here, still doing her Bacchic dance. He was right, for I see her there. What a dreadful sight. Father! Now you can be truly proud among all living men. You've produced by far the finest daughters. I'm talking of all of us, but mostly of myself. I've left behind my shuttle and my loom and risen to great things, catching wild beasts with my bare hands. Now I've captured it. I'm holding in my arms the finest trophy, as you can see. Bring it home to you so you may hang it here. Take this, Father. Let your hands welcome it. Be proud of it, of what I've caught. Summon all your friends, have a banquet, for you are blessed indeed, blessed of all these things your daughters have achieved. This grief beyond measure, beyond endurance. These hands of yours, you've murdered him. You've struck down this sacrificial victim that's offering to the gods, then invited me and all of Thebes to share a banquet. Alas, first for your sorrow, then my own. Lord God Dionysus, born into this family, has destroyed us, meeting out his justice, but too much so. Why such scowling eyes? How sorrowful and solemn old men become. <laughs> As for my son, I hope he's a fine hunter who copies his mother's hunting style when he rides out with young men of thieves chasing after creatures in the wild. The only thing he seems capable of doing is fighting with the gods. It's up to you, father, to reprimand him for it. I'll bring him here into my sight so he can see my good fortune for himself. What dreadful pain you'll feel when you realise what you've done. In your present state, you'll be unfortunate, but at least you won't feel as if you're suffering unhappiness. But what in all this is wrong or painful? First, raise your eyes. Look into the sky. All right. Why tell me to look up there? Does it seem the same to you? Or has it changed? It seems, well, brighter, more translucent than it was before. And you're in a spirit. Is it still shaking? I don't understand what you're asking. But my mind is clearing somehow. It's changing. It's not what it was before. Can you hear me? Can you answer clearly? Yes. But further, what we've discussed before, I've quite forgotten. Then tell me this. To which house did you come when you were married? You gave me to Echion, who men say was grown from seeds you cast. In that house, you bore your husband a son. What was his name? His name was Pentheus. I conceived him with his father. Then this head your hands are holding, whose is it? It's a lion's, that's what the hunter said. Inspect it carefully. You said that shouldn't require much effort. What is this? What am I looking at? What am I holding? Look at it. You'll understand more clearly. What I see fills me with horrific pain. Such agony. Does it still seem to be a lion's head to you? 
It's... No. It's Pantheus. That's right. I was lamenting his fate before you recognised him. Who killed him? How did he come to be in my hands? It's a harsh truth. How you come to light at the wrong moment. Tell me. My heart is breaking within me to hear what you're about to say. You murdered him. You and your sisters. Where is he killed? At home? In what sort of place? He was murdered, where dogs once made a common meal of Actaeon. But why did this poor man go to Kithiron? He went up there to ridicule you and the god for celebrating Dionysus. But how did we happen to be up there? You're all insane. The entire city was in a backing madness. Now I see. Dionysus has destroyed us all. The god took offence from your insult. You did not consider him to be a god. Father, where is the body of my dearest son? It was difficult to search for. I brought back what I could. Are all his limbs laid out just as they should be? And Pentheus, what part did he play in my madness? Like you, he was irreverent to the god. That's why the god linked you and him together in the same disaster, thus destroying this house. And me? I have no children left. Now I see this offspring of your womb, your unhappy woman, cruelly butchered in the most shameful way. He was the one who brought new vision to our family. My child, you upheld the honor of our house, my daughter's son. You are feared in Thebes. No one who saw you would ever insult you, for you would then inflict swift punishment upon you. Now I, the mighty Cadmus, the man who sowed and later harvested the most splendid crop, the Theban people, will be in exile, banished from his home. A dishonored man, even though, my child, you're alive no more. I still count you among those closest to me. You won't hold me in your arms and touch my cheek and say, Grandfather, as you ask, who's injured or dishonored you? Who's filled your heart with any pain? Tell me, Father so I might punish them, anyone who treats you in a shameful way. Now you're in this dreadful state. I'm in misery. Your mother's pitiful and all your relatives are in despair. If any man were to disrespect the gods, let him think about how this man perished. Then he should have developed faith in them. I'm sorry for you, Cadmus. You're in pain, but your grandson deserves his punishment. <laughs> yes, I am Dionysus. You see me now before you as a god. <laughs> you Thebans learned my powers too late. Dishonoring me, you earned the penalty. You refused my rights. Now you must leave. Abandon your city for some barbarian land. The Garway, too, that polluted creature must go into perpetual banishment. <laughs> and Cadmus, you too must enjoy your lot. Your form will change as so you become a serpent. Your wife, Harmonia, Ares' daughter, whom you, though mortal, took in marriage, will transform so she becomes a snake. 
As Zeus's oracle declares, you and she will drive chariots drawn by heifers. You'll rule barbarians. With your armies too large to count, you'll raise many cities. Once they despoil Apora's oracle, they'll have a painful journey back again. In the lands of the blessed, you and she will have your lives transformed. <laughs> That's what I proclaim. I, Dionysus, born from no mortal man, but from Zeus. <laughs> if you had understood how to act when you were unwilling, then you would be fortunate now with Zeus's child among your allies. Dionysus, we implore you. We've not acted justly. You were ignorant when you should have known. Now we understand. Your actions against us are too harsh. I was born a god and you insulted me. Angry gods should not act just like humans. My father Zeus willed this all long ago. So this must be our fate. A miserable exile. Alas. My poor son, my only child, destroyed by his mother's bacchic madness. How could these hands which loved him so have torn his limbs apart, ripped out his flesh? Here's an arm has held me all these years, grown stronger as he grew into a man. His feet, oh, how he used to run to me, seeking assurance of his mother's love. His face was handsome, on the verge of manhood. See the soft down still resting on these lips which have kissed me a thousand times or more. All this and all the rest set here before us. O oh, Zeus and all you Olympian gods, you are torturing 